All right, so Adobe just came out with its annual update for Lightroom with some crazy AI features that are going to affect any photographer that photographs people in a huge way. So I'm gonna be showing you some ideas of how I'm using these features moving forward, and I hope it's helpful for you as you dive into the update for yourself and how you can fit it into your workflow. All right, so I'm gonna dive in and show you some of the features, and I don't even know what the official name is for some of these features. I'm just gonna dive in and show you how I'm using them, but basically these are AI-powered tools within the brush option in the develop module. So look at this bridal party, right? So decent sized bridal party. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna act like I'm gonna start with a new brush, but I'm gonna come down here and select people. And the first time that I did this, um, I was just kind of clicking around like, oh, I've never seen this before. And this freaked me out. <laughs> Look what it does. It, it doesn't just find the people, it selects them individually. Every single person is individually selected. It gets crazier. So let's select the bride, okay? So we're selecting the bride and now you can add people or you can just stick with this one person and now you have to select which part of the bride you want to edit. And so you can just select facial skin, body skin, eyebrows, eye sclera, like the whites of the eye, the iris and pupil of the eyes, lips, teeth, hair, or clothes. If your mind is not blown, <laughs> it should be. Never before have you been able to make this type of specific selection outside of Photoshop. So if you wanted to do something crazy and you wanna do all these layers and masking and pull people off the background, that was not something you ever dreamed of doing within Lightroom. And so now it's as simple as a few clicks. You're like, Why, what is, how's this gonna help me in the future? If you have a bridal party, for example, and two of the girls got together and said, we're gonna go big and do spray tans, and they, they're way too orange. It happens at almost every wedding. You can select just those two bridesmaids or just that one bridesmaid or just the bride. Whoever has the spray tan that got a little out of control, you can select just them and then you can select just their skin and you can slightly desaturate or you can cool it down or you can brighten it up or you can change the black tones or you, it is insane. If you have dresses that are not quite the same color as the bride intended them for, the, for them to be, you can change the hue with one click little button and a slider. It is mind blowing that possibilities are absolutely endless. If you are photographing a bridal party and they're slightly underexposed and the background's overexposed, you wanna make a meet in the middle a little bit, but you want to save the background a little bit more, you, you can select just their skin and brighten just slightly. I think there are some red flags with all of these AI features in that people are going to have to learn how to control themselves because there are some changes, the power of the changes that you can make have to be balanced with the what is realistic with reality. I think we're going to see a new wave of photographers having to make judgment calls on, I know I can change it and fix it and make it look epic, but is that gonna be believable? So that's maybe a little red flag about this. It's so powerful and you can do so many things. We're gonna to have to rein it in and make sure we don't do things that are a little bit unbelievable. I'm just gonna give you an example. All right, so I'm gonna create the mask. So it's grabbing their two dresses you can see here. And now if I wanted to make them pink, I could just make them pink. Super, now let's say that's not what we wanna do. That's pretty extreme, um, but we just want to brighten them up a little bit. You can change the black levels. You can um, bump the shadows a little bit. You can pull down the highlights. Again, I think we're gonna have to control ourselves with either not trying to be perfectionist because you're gonna be able to look and be like, I could change anything. I could tweak anything and that's gonna drive you crazy. Or you can look at it and say, the things that I was already doing, that, that's where I would start. I would start by using these tools to do the things that you were doing that, was, that were taking you way too long and making that process faster, not trying to use every tool to the ultimate level of perfection for every single photo because that is actually a horrible business decision because you're gonna get sucked in and spend way too much time on one photo. But the cool thing is, is that when you have a situation where you need to make some edits like this, the ability to edit is faster and more efficient than it's ever been before. So let's look at another example. This is just from an engagement session. Let's go to select people. We're going to um, just select him. And now that he is selected, we're gonna say, we're just gonna do facial and body skin together. We're gonna to create that mask. And so now what I can do is that I can brighten his skin so it doesn't look too shadowy. I can desaturate a little bit because he had a little bit of a red tone in his skin compared to her. And last but not least, and I'll zoom in a little bit here so you can see. Last but not least, and I want you to 
uh, picture this with any type of skin imperfection. Everyone is going to have details in their skin, whether it's just a laugh line or it's bad acne or it's you know sh a, a rash from shaving, whatever. This can be applied to so many different scenarios. So you come here and you reduce the texture. Do you see what's happening to his skin? But yet the detail of his eyelashes remain. That's insane. Um, the clarity can do a similar effect. It's just affecting different parts of the image. So I just smoothed his skin a little bit, gave him a little bit more of a baby face. I took some of the redness um, away from the shadowed area of his face and I never had to paint over anything. It selected it itself and then I just made some slider adjustments. So pretty amazing. And I could go on and on and on and on with all the different examples of what you could do, but those are just two quick examples. If you find yourself um, worried because you're working with a client that is, has imperfect skin, you have an automatic solution and you can reassure them that you have something that can help with that. W could you do that before? Sure, but was it as fast or as effective and efficient? No. So if you want to become even more efficient, what you can do is that you can have specific brushes for specific parts of the face. So you might say, well, Caitlin, don't you already use those? And I do. However, I've never been able to be this specific and this um, exact with the selection process. And so I just, I never designed brushes to be able to use with AI features. And so what I've done is I've created one very basic but effective skin smoothing. It's not over the top, but skin smoothing brush that you can use whenever you select someone's face and you want to see some of these changes that I have demonstrated. You can actually download it for free at the link below. So basically what you would do is that you would make your selection, whatever skin you want to put within the mask, and then you just select the brush on the side. So for example, maybe it's the KJ Light Nuzzle Brush, and it would apply that edit just to the mask of the face or the body skin. Whatever you created from that selection, the AI selection, it will use that. And because it's a brush, and it's a preset, you can change the amount, the percentage of the brush to be applied with the slider at the top of the masking section. So if you don't wanna download mine, totally fine. It is free, so I don't know why you wouldn't, but if you don't wanna download mine, you can totally make your own. So if you find yourself doing the same adjustments, making the same little tweaks on sliders every time you're selecting a face or skin um, with the, AI, the new AI tool, save that and create your own preset. So anyway, if you want mine, click the link below. You can have it for free. I hope you enjoy it. I'm excited to make more tools for myself as I edit and then share them um, hopefully in the future with other photographers. But for now, enjoy this. I am just getting used to this new feature and I'm loving it and I hope you love it too. So my encouragement to you is to try it out. Play around with it. See, see how creative you can be with it. But also remember to stay realistic so your work doesn't take this drastic turn to like looking weirdly edited or overly edited. This is a great tool in my mind for fixing things that I've always wanted to fix um, and that sometimes I do fix, but it just took forever. So uh, yeah, I'm glad you tuned in. There's a whole playlist about Lightroom on our YouTube channel that you can dive into. We'll link that below as well. And I will see you next time. Bye. Bye.